July of 2015 was the warmest month ever recorded on planet Earth. It probably sounds like a headline we've given you before. That's because we seem to be hitting these new record high temperatures, global temperatures many, many times. NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, announced that indeed last month was the warmest month ever recorded for the globe. Ocean temperatures also nearly record warm. The July average temperature across global land and ocean surfaces was one and a half degrees Fahrenheit above the 20th century average. Separately, the land surface temperature was closer to one and three quarters degrees Fahrenheit above the 20th century average. Now, let's be very clear so that we're not accused of, 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 of misrepresenting the data by ever recorded. It means over the last hundred and thirty five years that the temperature has been recorded in this way. Climate change deniers will point to one particular line from this report which is that we have actually seen a slight increase, a slight increase in average Arctic sea ice. But let's remind everybody of two things. Number one, record warm or record cold temperatures alone do not prove or disprove broader humans are affecting climate change theories or hypotheses and Arctic ice increasing or decreasing slightly over short periods of time does not by itself prove or disprove any of these hypotheses either. Global warming due to carbon usage and fossil fuel burning is part of climate change. But within that climate change model, Lewis, we still see certain areas cooling or even being unusually cold. We see more erratic temperatures and we have to remember climate and weather events and temperature are all different things. Yeah, of course, we still have a consensus that uh, we are causing, uh, you know, dangerous changes to the planet. And that's really what the focus is here. So the term, yes, the term global warming uh, can be a bit confusing and people don't like it. Climate change, I suppose, is more accurate. Um, maybe we need a whole new term, but there's a consensus and we need to do something about it. Well, again, that consensus is 97 percent or more of the climate scientists believe that human activities on Earth are impacting the, cl the climate, broadly speaking. And we have to remember that your localized region could have any temperature or any weather pattern going on this month or last month or even for a year to show global warming, which is an element of climate change. You need to use information gathered around the globe over a long time. And now we are getting we are on year 135 of this data, still, historically speaking, almost completely insignificant with regards to how long this planet has been around. But if you combine it with historical carbon est carbon dioxide estimates, that's where we really start to get some more compelling data. We just need to act. The worst possible scenario is that we reduce our impact on the planet and we end up getting off of these dirty fossil fuels. And if it turns out the problem isn't as bad as some scientists think, we've done no great injustice to the future of humanity. Uh, yeah, the question is, uh, why risk it? Why not act on this? Uh, these these fuels, at least some of them are finite anyway. So, you know what? Let's just, you know, be proactive here.